Hi, this is Andy Braitman again. We're at Braitman Studio and there's a class going on in the background right now, so ignore the noise. And I'm just going to get my paints mixed up for the next uh, segment of the class. I want to talk to you a little bit about my palette, though. I have a burnt sienna and an ultramarine blue that I get. Technically, they're, I think they're student grade paints, but these, these two colors are just really spectacular. So I get ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and I also use white. It's a, a mixed white. Um, this is a cat orange, an Indian yellow, a lemon yellow, and you can get any manufacturer for these. They're all good quality paints. I tend to take any commercial Indian yellow I, may, I get, and I tend to add a touch of viridian to it because it's, it, it's just not quite green enough for me. So I'll take the lemon yellow and take the tiniest bit of viridian and mix it into that yellow. And it greens that color out a little bit. And it just makes it, a, a tr for me, it makes it a truer uh, lemon yellow. It doesn't take much, so that's, you can see the shift that went from that to this. It's just a little more green to that. Uh, this is a diazonine purple. Sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. And over here is a, a alizarin crimson. And um, this is a, a, from a figure class. This is a chrome green and a terra rosa. I'm not using them right now. Uh, but that's what you're seeing in the palette. What I'm mixing now, uh, now I have my different viscosities. I've got my wax. I've got a product, uh, a French talc. I've got a kyanite, which adds even more viscosity to the paint, but it has, gives it a surface, so it's like a grit. And I'll give you more information on the kyanite later. That's, a, that's, a, that's an awkward paint, to, that's an awkward inert material to find, but it really adds a real tooth to the paint. And I'll use that occasionally. Um, and then I have my waxes and talcs to either make it more liquid or make it more dry. And then my, pri my personal painting emulsion. And rather than uh, keep it in the vat I use and contaminate that, I usually put a little of it right here on the, on the palette. And this is how I'll start my painting. Right now I'm mixing up my green. So I take my mixed black, which is the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, and I mix them to a pretty dead black. And then depending upon how bright a color I want, I'll take the lemon yellow and mix that in to get a nice warm green. And look how pretty that green is. That's that new yellow I'm trying out, and that's a pretty color. You can tell Mona that's a nice green, a nice uh, yellow. So I've got a nice pile of that warm green. I'll take the same mixed black and add a lemon to it. And that should give me a nice cool green. And I'll keep adding lemon until I get that cool. Then I'll take a pure green, a permanent green light, which is a mixture of the Indian yellow and the thalo blue. That's another blue I've got in my palette. So I've got the ultramarine and the thalo. And again, I use any maker thalo. So I'll take this and throw that into that cool, cooler green. Then I'll take this with the gray and a little bit of white and get a sagier, kind of a reflective sky color green. And I'll use that in different areas too. So I've got my greens mixed up in advance before I start. That really helps me be more expressive with my painting. And usually the more pre-mixing I can do, I think of this is my pantry and this is my first set of mixing. And I try to mix it down to the usable colors here, and it usually takes three mixes. A lot of that'll happen on the canvas, and a lot of that'll happen on the palette. But I'll get that started, and, that's, and there's another really interesting brown you can get, which is using the complement of that diazonine purple, and I'll throw in that Indian, and that should give me a really nice brown as well. And with that brown, I can come back using that permanent green light and get an interesting green that's just almost like a woodland green that separates it from these others, and I'll use that on occasion too. And I'll take each of these piles and slightly modify them. I'll take a little bit of white and see what happens if I, as I lighten them. And I can lighten them and warm them up, or lighten them and cool them up. And this is just, that's a, just a really beautiful little grade green. So again, I'll start to lighten that pile up. <clears throat> And since that's already tending towards the cool, I'll just throw in a little blue to help that along the way and cool that off. And I'll do that for each of the piles. So I have this capacity to get them mixed down one more, st one more step. 
and I always use the back of the knife rather than the front of the knife and that lets me mix rapidly and again I'll explain that during our knife segment but the back of the knife is here versus the front of the knife and I always turn the knife upside down so I'm able to use the back of the knife and not have to stop to clean. So now I've pretty much got what I want to start. I've got a nice several piles of green, all of them usable. So I've mixed from my pantry color down to my base colors and down to my usable colors and I'm ready to start.